What is up landscape and night photographers? In today's video, I wanna show you guys how to use a really cool piece of software, Starry Landscape Stacker, which right now is just for Mac. Uh, and this is an updated video in 2022, showing you guys how to use it. The software has gained more and more features over the years. So you wanna make sure that you're watching this video here, which is an updated video. It's not an older one. So this has all the new features. Uh, and this software is going to help you guys to reduce the noise in your night photos. Uh, I want to show you guys kind of how I prepare my files to put into Starry Landscape Stacker and then how I use it. The software works amazingly. It's really, really nice piece of software that's going to help you guys to reduce the noise in your night photos. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, guys. We're going to jump into Starry Landscape Stacker here for Mac. All right, guys. So first thing is first, you got to find the photos. And what I recommend doing is uploading them into Lightroom first. I'm going to use this set of photos that I shot last summer in Idaho. You can see I've got my Mac Milky Way photos here, which were all shot back to back. And then I've got a couple dark frames that I shot as well. And dark frames are just where you put your lens cap on in front of your lens and you capture those dark frames and that will help Starry Landscape Stacker to produce a little better results. So what I like to do first is to go to the develop tab and I like to enable profile corrections and I like to do that on all of the photos. So essentially, um, and you can remove chromatic aberration as well. Once you do that, you can just click Command C to copy and then click copy here. And then you can select all of these at once by clicking on one and then shift clicking at the other end and hitting uh, Command V on a Mac, which is paste or Control V on a PC. Now the same settings are applied to all the images. And of course that's very important because we want every photo to look pretty much exactly the same. Now that we've got all of these photos here, what we want to do is export them and to put them into Starry Landscape Stacker, I like exporting as a TIFF. So what I do is go up to file, I go down to export and I actually have a preset for Milky Way TIFF. Obviously you guys aren't gonna have that, so I'm gonna tell you guys what to do, and then you can save it as a preset if you want by clicking add over here. So you're gonna go export to desktop is where I like to do it. I like to put it in the subfolder of Milky Way TIFF. You can of course name that whatever you want. Um, I don't do any file naming. Obviously I don't do anything under video. Under file settings, I do image format TIFF, Adobe RGB 1998, 16 bits per component, no compression, um, I don't do anything to image sizing, nothing to output sharpening, and the metadata doesn't really matter what you do. Um, and you obviously don't want to do a watermark and nothing for post-processing. So pretty much just make sure these file settings are like this and put it in this subfolder and go ahead and click export. And that will take just a second to export depending on how new your computer is and how large your files are. But once that's exported, we're going to open that right up into Starry Landscape Stacker. So once the images are exported, you're going to navigate to find this Milky Way TIFF folder here, and then you're gonna have all of the files here. And you just want to click on the first one and then shift click on the last one to select them all. You can display the image classification table after opening if you want, usually there's no issues, but sometimes I display it. And I will especially display it here just to show you guys kind of how the software is working. It's gonna take a second to read all the images. Essentially what it's doing here is it's trying to decide which images are light frames, which ones are dark frames, and then if you have anything else in there that's gonna help you reduce the noise, this is what it's figuring out right now. You can see it takes just a second here um, and once so once it loads out you can see that it opened eight light frames and eight dark frames it shows which are light and dark I don't have any flat frames and there's nothing that I want to ignore so I'm just going to leave that as is um, and then it also gives you a little description down here if you want to read it about what it likes for you to have so I'm gonna go ahead and click continue that is going to load the images out um, and it's going to process the eight light and dark frames to and then align them as well. So you'll see here just in a second once this loads out. So once it loads out, you're going to see an image that looks like this where your stars are going to be trailing. You're going to see red dots. Uh, there's going to be a lot going on here. The image that you're looking at at all times can be seen down here where it says current image. I'm on composite image right now. I can change it between images here. So the first thing that you need to do, uh, and it shows you the workflow here, is to edit dots in sky. So you're gonna add dots. Essentially the dots are just where the stars are. You can add them like this if you want. Um, I'm also going to add them to the reflection down here. And that way it will detect where exactly it needs to mask. So these stars just tell um, Starry Landscape Stacker, hey, this is where the sky is. Can you mask this area? 
just like that. That'll be good enough, I think. And you can go ahead and click Find Sky when you're done. I really, really like this software because it's really easy to work down the line. It tells you exactly what to do. Now you can see that it has masked really well and it's telling me that this is the sky that it's detecting and this is also the sky that it's detecting, which is just a reflection, which is totally fine. So what we wanna do here is we wanna paint sky or ground if there's any spots that it didn't do a good job on. Right here, we can touch that up with sky. We could come in here if we wanted and paint this in. Um, and if I was really doing this photo for real, I might come in and get really close and paint this. But for the sake of this tutorial, that's plenty good enough right now. Um, I'm just gonna touch up a few more of these places. That looks pretty good. Now we can go ahead and hit align and composite. So that is going to align all the images. Basically what Starry Landscape Stacker is doing now is it's taking those spots where the sky is and it's aligning them. So it's slightly rotating each image. Once it's done, you can see it's loaded out here. It looks pretty much the same, but let's actually zoom in. I'm gonna use Command Plus to zoom in over here. We'll look at right here in the image. Right now we're looking at the composite image. Let's look at one of the images before they were stacked together. You can see this is before. And this right here is after. You can see it's done quite a nice job with the noise reduction. And no, it's not perfect, but it's a great spot to start and then combine with other different noise reduction techniques. You also can change the composition algorithm. I usually don't change this, but if you wanted to change this, you could test a couple different ones as well. But I find that mean, min, uh, horror noise works really, really well. You can do max or min value. A lot of times that might reduce more noise, but it might make your image darker or lighter. So you can click through these and find which one works best for your image. But like I said, I'm guessing that this mean, min, horror noise works the best. So go ahead and select that one. And then you can click save current image once you're done. If you wanted to look around here more, and change between composite image and any of the other images, you totally could, just to see the before and after of what it's done. But it's worked really, really well here. It's made my stars, my stars nice and sharp, and I think it's looking pretty good. So once you're done there, you can zoom back out by hitting Command minus, and then you can hit Save Current Image. If you wanted to save a copy of the image with the mask, you totally could. This can be nice to jump into Photoshop to already have a mask made for you, but for the sake of this image, I'm not gonna do that. You can rename it if you want. Um, or you can name it like, uh, sometimes I'll do the image name and then SLS, Starry Landscape Stacker. Save that back into the Milky Way TIFF folder. So that'll save right into that folder. You can grab this here, drag it into Lightroom, just like that. It will appear here. And then you can click Import and bring it right into Lightroom and then go about editing it just as you would any other image. So really, really easy way to reduce noise on your images. You really should start using Starry Landscape Stacker if you have not already. All right, guys, hopefully this video was helpful for you and you guys will be able to create some low noise night images. I know Starry Landscape Stacker was a huge game changer for me when I first downloaded it. I'll include a link down below where you can pick this up. Like I said, it's just for Mac. If you guys are on PC, you can consider using Sequator. is another very similar software. I personally haven't used it, but I've heard good things about it from a lot of my clients who are on PC. So if you guys have any questions or comments about this video, please make sure to leave them down below. As always, I really appreciate you guys checking out these videos. I appreciate your likes and subscribes. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.